and welcome to the Stick Mitjata Knit My Heart podcast. My name is Maivo and today I am not coming to you from my home in Vasa in Finland but actually from uh, my summer cottage in the south of Finland in Porvo, right by the sea. Um, it's been quite a while, long while since I last recorded and I felt I really wanted to take uh, this opportunity now that I'm actually on holiday and have some more time and even though I'm filming with quite a makeshift setup today. I have my camera propped up on a grocery box supported by a packet of couscous. And um, I'm filming with this elegant uh, old cottage wall behind me. Um, but I did, I have brought my netting and that's what's most important, isn't it? So, so I thought I would just take this opportunity to film um, this sort of special episode for you and to just let you know how things are going. Um, now, uh, it's been about two months since I filmed. Um, and of course, this spring and, and all the stuff that's been happening um, recently in the world, I mean, it, it, it just keeps getting crazier and crazier, doesn't it? And I've also been, been battling some, some health issues, uh, not uh, COVID related or otherwise, but, but stress related and which has also given me some aches and pains and and, and just affected my <laughs> my mood and my energy as well so that's why why there's been a bit of a, a hiatus but i have still knitted and i um am still knitting and i have a few things to show you to talk about today and uh, now this place that I'm filming from I will show you just a little bit of footage um, at the end of, of the surroundings and the sea um, that is just right in front of me here I'm sitting on on the back terrace which is facing the sea um, and this uh, runs in my family my maternal grandmother was born here and her parents bought this site and built their home here and so my children are now the fifth generation that come to this place. So uh, this is very precious to us. It's very simple. We live the simple life here. There are no uh, toilets or showers uh, or running water. And we do have electricity. Um, otherwise we would not be able to bring the teenagers, let me tell you that. Um, but uh, other than that, and there's really nothing fancy <laughs> or even even comfortable but the beauty of of um, the nature and the place here is uh, is enough for at least for for being here for um for a week or so at a time so um uh, i'm filming today with my that's where my camera is, but I can see myself down there. Uh, so if my eyes wander a bit, you know why. And I'm also looking at myself, uh, sort of portrait, whereas I'm filming landscape, which is very confusing. So just so you know. Um, I might, may start with what I'm wearing. This is um, a finished object or almost finished. I do have a few threads somewhere left to weave in um, but this is the coral coral top by Helga Isager which I have been working on for quite a long time um, it's uh, knit in Sannes uh, Line no Sannes Thin Line thin the thinner version of the Sannes linen yarn which is actually a blend of linen cotton and viscose um, and I'm knitted, knitted with only one thread, so uh, and and on three millimeter needles, so it, it's quite a fine fine gauge project. Um, as I think I've said before, I wasn't very happy with how the the pattern was written, the instructions. So I have kind of winged it all along, um, and just kind of made my own <laughs> interpretations and just dabbled, um, and. Um, it, I haven't enjoyed it all the way 
there are times when I really have not loved it at all. But in the end, I think it's come out okay. Uh, it's come out okay. Now, yeah, uh, this it's sleeveless. It has this neckline, neckline that you knit first, and then from that you you either pick up or you leave liable stitches and continue working in the bias. So the the front is knit in the bias, and the back is just knit straight down. And then you have these uh, faux seams. Uh, on the sides um, and then at the bottom there is border edging as well it drapes really well this fabric drapes really well which is good because there are just masses and masses of stitches and in, in the front here and that was a bit of a problem or I felt that that was a bit wasn't sure what to do with that and how that how and it does it it has quite a lot of bulk at the front but because it drapes quite nicely it's 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 okay it's not too bad um and I also quite like the way it the sort of the ruffles form here at the front even though I did have some issues with that as well because I felt I had too many stitches um so I I've I've winged a few solutions there here and there <laughs> to, to try and solve that. But wearing it like this, I, I think I will rarely wear it just sleeveless because let's face it, summer in Finland is rarely that hot that you just wanna go around wearing sleeveless tops all day long. Most of the time you wanna wear something on your shoulders as well. So today I'm just wearing it with, with a store-bought thin cardigan. And I think that's probably what I'm how I'm most likely to wear it. So, happy to have finished it. Uh, I really like this model. I wouldn't mind making it again if I could kind of get those instructions or, or get the pattern to work a little bit better for me. Um, so, we'll see. But really happy with the color and happy with the yarn and happy with, with the, the look of, of this project. Uh, I am also squinting and frowning against the light so if I look angry all the time I'm sorry I am quite sensitive to light and I I do have a, a sort of um, a, a screen actually up here to block out the sun because the sun is coming right at me as you can see see here um, but I'm still squinting a bit I can feel it okay uh, well, yeah, I just want to say that also that I'm not going to put up any of the graphics um, this time, which I usually do sort of put some graphics up on, on a wall or something with with the names of the designers and the yarn and the patterns. Um, but I, I won't be fiddling with that since I'm on, on holiday and I wanna, don't want to sit, spend my days editing. So I will put everything down in the show notes below and I will try to remember uh, to say everything everyone's names and stuff um, now my next project or the one that I have perhaps been working on the most actively recently is also a, a summer top um, the the azul tea by Elizabeth Smith it's quite a recent pattern was I was published just a few weeks ago and this is how far I've come. Now, you are now looking at the front um, and this is the back. So I have I have some light, live stitches left there and then because I've divided for the arms. These are, these are the armholes and so I'm going to continue working up the back. When I've finished the front, it has these uh, this um, pattern or an elongated eyelet, eye, um, le, eye, <laughs> what are these called? They are called yarn overs, yes. And uh, the elongated eye, uh, left, yarn, <laughs> the elongated leftovers, yarn overs, eyelet, yeah, you know, you get the picture. The elongated, <laughs> yarn overs. The elongated yarn overs uh, down at the bottom 
and then it, it is this kind of the you can see that the cha color changes now the camera picks that up much clearer than it actually looks when you look at it in real life but that is often the case i think with the cameras they pick up make pick up colors a little differently and then i can now see that the light here is really really strange i wonder if i can adjust that somehow um yeah not sure um the, the yarn that i'm using is concept by katja um silk de degradé it's 35% silk 35% cotton and 30% viscose so um cotton silk viscose blend um quite nice to knit with and i do like how the sort of um, color range the muted sort of dusty um, beiges oranges and and pinks that come um, and and um, apart from from those those um, rows down at the bottom with or the elongated yarn overs there is a, a border or a band of um, a stockinette stitch which is right under the neckline so I am now going to do just a little bit of shoulder shaping and neckline shaping and then the front is actually done and then I'm gonna, gonna knit the back and it doesn't have uh, a, a knit in sleeve or anything or an attached sleeve it just has these um, openings I openings for the arms uh, it's a bit oversized and boxy so, so fairly sort of rectangular in shape but I think it will I think I'm, I'm looking forward to wearing this well that doesn't really that doesn't really work now that I have the needle on it um, it drapes really, really nicely as well and I do, do like um, this yarn now the yarn that I have left actually looks like this um, I've knit it, I've um, had to, because I'm, I've divided it, I was working in the round up till here, till here, of course, uh, but then when I divided it in order to get the sort of fade, because the yarn is, the yarn just start out, starts out as one, one big ball with, with the sort of fade worked um, as it, as it comes. And um, in order to get the fade the same, on both the front and the back I had to divide to divide the yarn or cut the yarn whenever there was a color change and divide it up into equal size equal balls for both the front and the back and that's why I have all these balls balls left now and now I think I'm actually not gonna make it to the final the final color which is this the brightest of the pink or are these the same even well, this one at least, this is the, the last one. Uh, now that's a bit of a shame because I do think this is very, really pretty, pretty the last one. Uh, and But that will actually be left over. But hey, that's life. Not much left on this, this one. So I, I will actually, I think, will be wearing this this summer. Looking forward to that. Um, now another project that I started some time ago, that is a shawl. Oh, let's see if I can disentangle this. This is the, I need to check the name of the, um, the designer, just a sec. The Exordium Shawl by Rebecca Pico. Rebecca Pico, Exordium. Um, this is a triangular shawl started at this tip here and then it has the basically it alternates between um, a sort of striped sec striped section and then it has these uh, textured sections with two different colors and then it has these single color sections and it's knit in two, two different yarns. 
uh, alternating. And I, I do love how, how these two yarns sort of interact with each other and just create these different sections. It's very, um, it's very uh, soothing. The colors are, are very harmonious, I think. They have sort of a, a dust, the colors are a little, a little dusty, but still have these kind of a little bit of a maritime feel because there's all these uh, turquoise and blues in it. Um, yeah, so I'm really liking the outcome of this one. And, and the yarn, the yarns uh, is Kasaker Hopom Hopom Pom BFL sock, I think, um, in the colorway uh, Salvia, I believe. And the, the, um, the speckled yarn is the Gondor colorway that I bought um, at the, the, the um, Neolvasa event, I remember I bought me buying it there. The Gondor colorway yarn by Stu. I think this is just a woolen sock yarn. Yarn by Stu, Gondor. But these go really well together. And I, I really like how this is turning out. Also very relaxing and, and sort of unpretentious knit somehow, but, but quite effective in its simplicity, I think. And while I've been here on holiday, We've been only we've been here only two days, but I did start and I, as new projects, I only brought with me some sock uh, yarns and, and needles, and I have started a pair of socks. Very much mis mismatched, uh, because I am working, I'm using leftovers. Um, I started because I'm using leftovers. I started from the toe, and this is actually a self-striping yarn. From, it's the same, it's the same uh, ball, but because I started, I did one first. This is where this is where it started, and this is where it continues, and of course it ended up differently. And and this um, main yarn that I'm using for the foot, um, I had that's uh, that's a yarn that I have used for another so pair of socks, uh, which I uh, have actually worn a lot, and I really really like. Uh, like them. This is a. I don't have the, the ball band with me, so I can't say very specifically what this yarn is. It's a it's a Regia sock yarn, but it ha and it's called something stretch something. <laughs> so it has a it has a wool base, but then I'm I'm pretty sure it has um, some acrylic and some some elastic uh, elastane or something like that in it because it's really sort of bouncy. And it creates a really, really re sort of elastic fabric. So these are now look really, really tiny because I'm only knitting on 56 stitches. But it stretches and and ha and bounces r really nicely. And this makes a really foot, really nice and foot hugging sock. These the other socks that I that I have knit using this yarn fit sit really, really well on the foot. So so this is actually quite a nice yarn. Even though it's not, you know, it doesn't have that woolen woolen feel, but for for it, it more resembles actually a normal sock that you, sock that you, that you buy, in in the shops. So. So these will probably be, be um, ankle ankle length, because I, I don't think I'll have have enough yarn, but that's okay. Just a basic, very basic, uh, basic uh, toe up probably a short row heel sock. Yep. And um, some other yarns that I brought with me for for sock, knitting socks as well, if I get around to it, if I finish these and want to knit another pair, um, is one of the uh, Kera uh, yarns that I bought sometime this spring. This is the Wednesday colorway, the Merino Sock Wednesday colorway. So, and then this would, I think, I would like to make this into maybe a cable sock or a, a, a sock with some type of texture uh, on it. So we'll see if I get around to that. And then I also brought this yarn, Himalaya Socks Bamboo, um, which is 
which is a, a sort of kind of basic inexpensive uh, bamboo blend. Let's see, merino, polyamid, and bamboo. Yeah. But I have also knit a pair of socks out of this yarn before, and I also really like those. Uh, the bamboo component make them quite cool. So they're good summer socks. They're not, they're quite the opposite of this, of these, this yarn, which is very elastic. This doesn't have a lot of elasticity in it. Um, but because, but, but there's been, but they're nice and airy. And of course they're self, they'll sell self striping. So they're not, I'm not gonna, I would probably just make these into very plain, very plain vanilla socks maybe even for for one of the men in the family if if they want if they express a need for socks i might i might <laughs> make some something for them otherwise i'll make something for myself so just basic uncomplicated netting and uh, now i did also bring a project an almost finished project that I haven't shown you. Oh, I have shown you. I have shown it to you, but I haven't shown it to you in this state before. I brought it because I've I have very little finishing to do, and I, I thought maybe one day or one evening I might get around to doing that here. So this is the silver lining um, cardigan, the silver lining by by uh, Jennifer Steingas. Let's see if I can get this organized somehow so that you can see it. That's the yoke. And that's the body. Now, um, the kind of special thing about this one is, is really this steak and this of course, I've had to modify the um, the neckline because I made it into a cardigan. Um, it just had a sim very simple cast on, even I think just a sort of slightly rolling uh, neckline. Um, if you make it into as a sweater, but when you make it into a cardigan, that doesn't really look too pretty. So what I did, I picked up stitches. This, I'm, I'm not sure I'm, I will be able to show this to you properly. But I picked up stitches. Um, and just made a sort of double, double um, edged lining around the neck. It, and it looks quite pretty on the on the inside as well. Um, yeah. And then the stick I have made here, um, let's see now, a sandwich stick, which is, uh, uh, at least Kate Davis has tutorials about that. And also uh, uh, there's been a tutorial about it on Fruity Knitting, the Fruity Knitting podcast. And I felt that I, that, that I, I'd like to try that, um, particularly because it makes the inside look really, really pretty. And I don't want to do one extra bit of, of sewing and <laughs> stitching anything by hand, such as uh, a band mm -hmm. that you could, or a ribbon. Um, so what you do here is is you actually pick up you pick up stitches along along this the one the the outside of the stick you knit a few few um, rows and then you pick up stitches on the inside of the stick and you knit a few rows and then you you um, bind those off right at the edge. Now here I you are bound, bound off with an I-cord edge and I've made the buttonholes in the I-cord edge as well. So I thought that that would be kind of cool. Um, and 
now that it's finished, it is kind of cool. It was a struggle, though. I will not lie to you. Uh, oh, picking picking up uh, picking up the stitches uh, for for this edging. Uh, now, the, this uh, the yarn here, the brown yarn is a fin sheep um, woolen yarn that I bought many many years ago. I don't have any clue uh, from where. Um, it, it was a locally produced yarn, I think. So I bought it somewhere on a market or or a place like that. And um, and um, th this yarn doesn't really want to be yarn. <laughs> it wants to go back to being fleece because when, when I was when, when I was picking up the stitches, I mean, the, the threads they just disappeared. The stitches disappeared. I couldn't see what I was doing. Um, some of the the stick actually came undone. Ah, oh, I battled. Um, and and before I blocked it, this this um, sandwich stick, which is actually um, because inside this you have you have actually three layers inside of this sandwich. You have the sort of steaked oh, cut edge, um, so you have three layers of of knitting, which is quite thick. But once I blocked it, this softened really nicely, and and um, it's not too bulky now. It would work better with a slightly uh, finer yarn. I think this this would be a bit more elegant if the yarn was a little finer. But it was an experiment and I think it turned out not too bad at all, actually. Uh, but as I said, now, now that this yarn is blocked, I think it does look really nice. I think this looks kind of rustic and a bit vintage. And, and actually, I do like it. But as I say, the stitch definition or the sort of layer the the row definition when i was about to pick up the stitches i mean it was just hopeless so but i learned a lot along the way where is that arm <laughs> and um i only have i have a few uh ends to weave in and i have the buttons to sew and i have the buttons with me and that's what i was planning to do here sometime when I get around to it and I I will try and show them to you let's see if I put them in front of my eyes will the focus will the camera focus no it will not <laughs> um sorry I'm just tr trying to there we are. There we are. Um, so they have this sort of slightly vintage feel to them, these buttons as well. So I think it will actually look really nice when it's finished. And um, so, uh, sometime later, when it's not summer anymore, um, I will I will wear this and show it to you when when it's actually finished, finished and be worn. But I do think I do think that I will get quite a lot of wear out of this. It's it's a nice nice garment. Um, now that's all for my. For my knitting but i just want to finish off by actually giving you a, a book tip and a book that i brought with me that i've been reading i'm almost i've almost finished it but i have a little bit left and i, I that i have been really been enjoying this is a book called knitlandia by clara parks and knitlandia a knitter sees the world now clara parks um in the 90s i think she started the website uh um yarn no no i don't remember what the what the name of the uh, website was but it was uh, yarn reviews she she tested yarn she took she tried out yarns that were coming out on the market and tested them and and wrote reviews about them that was before ravelry and all this um 
So she was kind of groundbreaking in in um, bringing uh, new in bringing information about yarns to knitters um, on online that had hadn't really been available before. Um, now she's she has since moved on and she's written several books about uh, yarn and about knitting and this book is is an it's a, it's a selection of essays or um, of of stories really of how she is of travels that she's made um, mostly in the U.S. because she's US, U.S. based um, but also um, to um, Iceland for instance. And where and she's traveled to places where she's she's met other knitters. She's either either traveled with knitters, or she has um, met up with other knitters in the destinations that she's traveled with. She she talks about the great the big yarn shows in the U.S., um, Rhinebeck, Maryland, Sheep and Wool, and and so on, and and um, a, a lot and she and she there's there's lots of funny stories about sort of the the big characters in the knitting world that she's come across during these these uh, travels and she's she's a great storyteller she she um, uh, talks about about this in 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 it's very entertaining and very easy to to read and and you you sit there with a smile on your face most of the time so if you just if you want some knitting related light reading which is also informative, but it's not technical in any way. It, it doesn't. It, this doesn't talk about knitting techniques or anything like that. It, it talks about the people in the knitting industry, and and so th then this is this is really a, um, a really good good read. I have gotten this out of the library, but I'm sure it's available on online um, from bookshops online as well. So, yeah, I think that's about all I have to share with you today. I will be back with my regular content, content <laughs> um, when I'm back home. Oh, and now I, I think I really need to stop because I am getting bugs in on the inside of my glasses <laughs> it's it's getting I, well, let's see it's um it's half past nine at night uh, but the sun is still high up it's it's um midsummer next week a week from now and that and it's also the summer solstice then which means that we only have about three or four hours when the sun is actually not up so these are really the best days of summer for me. Fantastic. And we, we are so blessed to have this beautiful warm weather now too. So I'm going to just enjoy my holiday and I hope that you are also well uh, and enjoying yourself wherever you are and enjoying your knitting. Um, and I will see you soon again. Bye.